This is Twit. All right. Last week, Microsoft had its big Surface and AI event. They all have AI in there in some way, shape, or form these days. It began with a bang, the announcement of a unified co-pilot uh, offering. And, um, you know, I know I would love to know more about this. So we have Daniel Rubino from Windows Central here to talk all about that smart AI feature set. Welcome back to the show, Daniel. Thanks for having me. Yeah, it's great to get you here. Thank you for taking some time to talk about Copilot, which I realize like I'm I'm not entrenched in the Microsoft world, but I do know that Copilot kind of existed before the news last week. So the news wasn't that it exists, but rather that it's kind of changing to kind of integrate on a wider scale. Talk a little bit about um, how Copilot existed prior to this integration. What, where were people running into and, and interacting with Copilot prior to last week? Actually, nowhere. <laughs> so nowhere. Copilot, yeah, Copilot was a a demonstration of a product that was supposed to come later this fall ah, when it was first showed off in May. Got it. Yeah, I think what you're confusing with it's Bing Chat. So Bing Chat's been out since February. That was the big thing that was announced. And Copilot is built off of that using a lot of the same technology. So they're similar, but they, they're a little bit different as well. So what happened was in May, they announced that, you know, Copilot was coming. And what they showed was it like existing in all different apps and everything. And they would just call it like Copilot for Outlook and Copilot for Excel and all that. All they kind of did at this event was unify them conceptually mm -hmm. uh, with a unified logo, but they still technically exist independently within um, different apps or Windows 11 itself. Uh, the difference, of course, is they're all tied to your Microsoft account, so stuff is kind of shared between them. But that's kind of what was the, the big story. They went to more detail about stuff that's coming as well as for uh, Bing Chat for Enterprise. Okay, so... With this kind of unified uh, approach, which to me makes a lot of sense. I know Google has been doing this as well with a lot of its AI into its products. I've I've felt uh, for the past year, kind of my growing feeling around AI is it makes a heck of a lot more sense to bring AI into the things you're already using as opposed to having like a destination that you go to interact. And that seems to be what Microsoft um, is doing with Copilot. What What is its capabilities and where are people discovering it? So what happened was this week, Microsoft pushed out a new update. They're just calling it the September 26th update. There's really no official name for it. Uh, but if you go and seek this update, meaning you, you go and check for updates on your Windows 11 computer and it's qualified, you will get this update. Otherwise, it'll be pushed out to everyone uh, in the coming weeks. This is the first release publicly, or I should say that mainstream versus the insider channels where Copilot is available. Uh, it's only available in some countries. It'll be rolling out. It's in preview form, you know, so it's a early look at it. Um, you know, what can it do now? Not a ton. I mean, so it does like bing chat right so bing chats in there so you can do all the same stuff you were doing in bing chat before you can drag and drop things into it so there's some cool stuff you can already do there's a lot more coming but like right now you can take like a screenshot of on your computer of whatever say it has text in it you can drop it into the chats and ask it a question summarize what's on this image mm -hmm. tell me what this is translate it and all that and it'll use uh ocr to basically read that image and do whatever you're asking to do. Uh, eventually, you'll also be able to take a, a photo and drop it into it and say, you know, remove the background, and it'll remove the background for you. So there's a bunch of this sort of like things it can do there. Um, it's also sort of contextual. So there's an option to uh, you turn it on and it works with the edge. Uh, so it can like see what's on edge at the moment. So you can be like, hey, summarize this page or do this and do that. Um, but and you can also do basic commands with Windows itself. Like you can tell it to go to dark mode or organize your windows. But more and more features are coming. I think this is sort of like, you know, years ago, Microsoft had Cortana and then we mm. had Siri and we had all these assistants. This is what we thought that was going to be. So <laughs> right. this is truly an assistant that uses machine learning. Uh it's gonna be a lot of it's gonna be local. And it's going to be able to actually go and do requests for you, as well as other things. For instance, 
Microsoft has a thing called a uh, phone link where it connects your Android phone and even the iPhone to Windows itself. And you can see text messages and alerts and notifications all on your computer without taking your phone out. Well, with Copilot, you can be able to ask Copilot, you know, to search something in your text messages and it'll be able to do that from your PC and search it on your phone because it's going to have a record of your text messages that came in. So it's really kind of a, a very powerful tool that's only going to get more powerful in the coming weeks, months and years. Yeah, you can imagine as a, as an operating system is built up around this kind of advanced uh, functionality, um, what that could lead to. Do you have any like wish list items? Like, you know what? It, it's it's capable of doing some pretty interesting stuff, though. There, you know, the the sky's the limit for the future. <laughs> I really want this particular thing. You know, for it to for it to be uh, able to do that. Do you have any wish list items? Yeah, I mean, I think the holy grail here is proactive. Uh, you know, actions, yeah. you know, in other words, you get up in the morning, turn your computer on and Copilot tells you, Hey, you have these important emails that came in. You have a calendar appointment here. Do you want me to text this person? You know, like oh really like a true That'd assistant. That will, yeah. And, and that's going to be possible. It'll take us some time to get there, but mm -hmm. it's totally possible. The big thing that's coming out with Intel uh, is an NPU. So all processors coming out in the next couple of years will have a dedicated process, processor for AI. And this is going to start using that, you know? So that's kind of the future there. I also just like the stuff in Outlook and Office. So like, for instance, if you're in Office, like one of the things in like PowerPoint was you had to be like a PowerPoint expert before to make a good PowerPoint presentation. It was a skill in of itself, yes. let alone the knowledge you had to put into whatever that presentation was. Now you can go in and tell it, be like, hey, give me a banner with the fall leaves and use this photo in there as well. And it'll generate a banner for you and put it in there or give me a background image. And then you can use that image. You can remove things from the background, add things to it all using AI. Since this is now going to be powered by Dolly 3, which is a much more powerful uh, implementation mm -hmm. of being an image creator. Interesting. Okay, so how are people, uh, how are users presented with the opportunity to do this? Is this something that they find kind of in the taskbar, like search you know, or microphone area in order to trigger it? Or is it more integrated into each uh, different component of the operating system and apps in different places where it makes sense. How, how is that presented? Yes. <laughs> so the short answer is with the Windows 11 update this week, if you got it, which has 150 new features in there. Uh, and I believe it's if you're in the U.S. or certain countries, you'll have Copilot Preview. It'll be next to the search bar. It's a, their new universal icon that they're using. It's a very colorful ribbon and it says pre on it. When you click it, a pane is going to slide out from the right side and give you access to it. So that's how it's going to exist in Windows 11. There'll be a shortcut key you can do just to bring it up as well. It'll probably be voice activated pretty soon too. Uh, it will also be in those other apps I said, like Microsoft Office, right. Word, PowerPoint. That's still coming, but um, that's going to be sort of the next iteration. It's also going to, they're going to update Edge to, instead of having the Bing chat icon, it's going to be this icon. So it's going to be in all their apps in some form. It's even in SwiftKey right now on Android, uh, and I think on iOS. But it's, um, so you can actually use the keyboard and start using this technology within the keyboard to grammar check and do all this sort of stuff right on your phone in real time. How much of this, I, I'm, I'm assuming this is all happening on device and not necessarily going to yeah. the cloud. Um, is there any sort of uh, concerns around, you know, the, the, the standard kind of concerns that we see around AI and, and like data privacy, especially when you're talking about like enterprise sure. users and stuff like that? Is that even a consideration here? So for enterprise, of course it is, right? Enterprise <laughs> gets the, 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 the white, yeah, the white glove treatment, right? Yeah. So there is Bing chat for enterprise. It's a siloed version of this. And what that means is whatever data you're putting into it or giving it access to never goes to Microsoft and is never used to train models for the, for AI. Okay. Basically it stays on the device and doesn't go anywhere. And it, when you use it, it actually has a secured uh, notification at the top telling you that. For consumers, it's a bit different. Now, none of the information you're giving is tied to, it's tied to your account, but not, uh, but it's anonymous. It, there's no name with it, right? So it goes back into the system. It is used for training. There's been over a billion chats used by Bing Chat so far. So you're, you're, 
you're, whatever you put in there is going to be used for training, but it won't be uh, traceable back to you. Now, is this a privacy and security concern? Yeah, possibly, right? I think all this stuff is. And, you know, um, there was recently a headline talking about how all this new AI is basically a surveillance tool. And it kind mm -hmm. of is in a way. So we have to be careful with this. I'll say Microsoft has published uh, what they call um, their ethics on AI. And you can go to their website and they publish all their documents on what they what they're doing with privacy, their goals and, and their philosophy on this approach. It's all transparent and there for anyone to read. Um, so, you know, they're being uh, very forward with this stuff, making sure consumers are know, know what they're getting into. Of mm -hmm. course, you can always opt out of this stuff. No one's forcing you to use it. You can just turn this thing off if you don't want to use it, too. Sure, sure. Okay. Um, now, now, this was just one of, of many announcements. And before we let you go, I thought I'd give you the opportunity to, you know, maybe maybe this was the most exciting part of the uh, the announcements last week, uh, or maybe it's something else. What what was the what was the announcement from last week that had you most excited, most energized? So, I mean, Windows 11 in general has just gotten a lot more refined and it's just turning out to be like a really nice modern operating system. And they're clearly devoting a lot of time to doing that. So I'm pretty happy overall with this update. I think it's one of the more substantial ones we've seen since the release of Windows 11. But besides that, they also announced a Surface Laptop Studio 2. I've gone on record saying the Laptop Studio, the first one, was, is one of my favorite laptops ever. It's just mm -hmm. and it's one of the best Surface devices they've ever created. It's very expensive. It's kind of a niche use. But it's just it gets great battery life. The performance is good and the form factor is totally unique. So I'm getting my hands on the second one very soon Excellent. and very excited to try that out. I think it's just one of the best examples of what a Windows PC can be. Yeah. OK, well, that's a that's a big tease forward then uh, with the successor coming out. And uh, you'll have the review at Windows Central dot com, yep. I imagine, um, here in of course. a short bit. So, Daniel yep. Ravino, thank you so much for hopping on and uh, and telling me a little bit about this. And, uh, yeah, everybody okay. should follow your work at windowscentral.com. Thank you. Great. Thanks. All right. Take care. We'll talk to you soon. Tech Break is brought to you by our friends at IT Pro TV, now called ACI Learning. With all the same fun of IT Pro TV, ACI is amplified with new solutions for all your IT training needs. Entertain your team while they learn. Visit go.acilearning.com slash twit. Twit listeners who complete the form can receive as much as 65% off an IT Pro enterprise solution plan. You'll get the proper quote based on the size of your team. 